Welcome and another interview from the Things Conference in Amsterdam. Hi, who are you and what do you do? Hey, I'm uh, Nicolas Sorna, working for Semtech and I live in the French Alps in Grenoble in France. You work for Semtech, but uh, um, you actually told me just now that you're basically the inventor of LoRa. Tell me a little bit about that. So, yeah, so um, we, we have a friend, Olivier Seller. We um, co-founded the startup now eight years ago, actually. Um, that actually, where we developed the LoRa concept and LoRa technology, and that startup was actually acquired by Semtech uh, six years ago. Um, and so since then, I've been a technical director for all the LoRa product inside of Semtech. And I'm basically, my role there is to make sure that, you know, pushing innovation through the LoRa ecosystem and uh, making sure everybody has a required technology brick to build what they need to build. All right. So before we start a little bit about that, talk about a little bit about that, uh, uh, how did you come up with the idea to, to create LoRa? Oh, um, at that time, I was working uh, on a GPS system. And um, GPS achieves uh, amazing range because uh, with low power signal, they go 20,000 kilometer from, from orbit to, to Earth. Um, and I said, basically, I had this idea that it would be great to have such long range, low power um, radio technologies, but just for you know, everyday devices. Unfortunately, you can't use the GPS technology because it's so power angry and, and processing angry. And so we, with Olivier, we went out to actually find something that would have similar performance, but would be much simpler and much lower power. Took us about a couple of years, and as that's how LoRa was built. So was there a particular problem that you wanted to solve with that? Was there a particular device that you figured that um, needs to be connected? Alors, um, so at the very beginning, uh, we wanted to do, uh, the, our, our first idea was to do kind of a walkie-talkie between two phones using, uh, you know, uh, what we call it a Bluetooth long range, what we wanted to build Bluetooth long range. Never happened. Uh, but uh, we started talking to people, and actually we realized that uh, there were many, well, like millions virtually of applications that could use uh, long-range, low-power radio links. Uh, and the first customer ever we had was uh, doing uh, um, water metering, uh, water meters uh, that are uh, in houses in France, and you want to collect the data. So that was how we started, actually. Now, fast forward. To today, I mean, you, you started it all with a certain idea, of, uh, uh, but now uh, there's so many people working on it. What, what is the craziest application that you've seen so far? You said, okay, uh, we never thought that this could happen. Alors, yeah, there, are, there are two that I like to talk about. The first one is uh, connected mousetraps, which seems uh, silly. Uh, and actually, it's extremely serious, uh, mainly, uh, mainly in the US for, for regulatory reasons. So actually, at first, I really laughed when people came to me and said, we want to build a connected mousetrap. But actually, I understand that there's a real need for that, uh, so it's, it's a deadly serious project now. And the other one is uh, tracking uh, tumble stones in, in, South, Afri in South Africa. Uh, so I always thought that these were stationary assets, but they tend to be mobile in South Africa. So How, how does that work? I, I don't know. So they, they put a tracker on the tumble stone, and, uh, because basically it looks like in the same cemetery, people tend to reuse a neighbor's tombstone and just re-engrave them. <laughs> so it's, it's to be able to find where your tumble stone has gone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but it's a real application also. <laughs> so you are, uh, um, you've been involved in this industry since the beginning, since you made, more or less developed it. Uh, um, um, so if we look at the current status, uh, uh, where are we with, with Laura? Um, I was talking with a guy from, from Microchip today, and he said, um, any technology we've seen so far takes 10 years from you know, birth to actually booming and become widespread adopted. Uh, so with LoRa, we are basically eight years into the process. And I think that's, that's, that's correct, actually. Uh, we, we're seeing the, um, the kickoff, you know, the, the, the exponential curve kicking in. Um, plenty of use case, explosion of use cases, people that are converting from proof of concept to real product right now. So I think the next two years, are really be going into the real world, basically. This, it stops to be like a funny technology and it becomes a mainstream technology. Okay, um, and if you look towards this, this future, what, what are the, the biggest challenges ahead right now? Um, so, um, many actually, uh, but um, uh, a lot of people, and, and, I, and I belong to that category, category are, are uh, convinced that um, geolocation services are the killer app of, of IoT networks. Um, 
But uh, geolocation requires um, fusion of many technologies. It's not, it's not just LoRa, it's not just GPS, not, it's not Wi-Fi sniffing. It's all of this put together with some very clever software. Uh, it's even close to artificial intelligence, what you need on the device to achieve this. So there is a really big challenge out for the community to build clever enough device that can select the right technology at the right time to optimizing power but delivering the useful data on time to the user. Um, so basically, this uh, putting this intelligence on a very small and cheap device is, I think, what the challenge is about at the moment. Are the people working? Are you working on that? I know, I'm, I'm trying to enable them. I'm not working on that directly. Uh, but uh, there are many companies. That, so basically, I'm not stealing the job of my customers. But basically, uh, I'm selling LoRa chips. They build device uh, that use this technology. But we're trying to help them as much as we can. So typically, if on the LoRa side there is anything we can do to simplify the life, for example, provide uh, very fine-grained uh, time synchronization helps the GPS to lock faster and therefore reduces power. This kind of thing we can do. So we're working closely with many, many different companies to try to achieve this. One other topic that pop, uh, pops up if we talk about technology and, and, and uh, wireless connection, et cetera, is, is security. Uh, yes. Uh, um, where are we at? How secure, how unsecure? Uh, uh, security, I think security is used as, uh, you know, a fear factor um, because it, it looks extremely complex to many people and so it's actually extremely easy to say anything or in, in the contrary. Um, so, uh, nonetheless, LoRa1, the protocol that runs on top of LoRa, was designed right from the beginning uh, so that everything would be encrypted and, and secured. Uh, the, the, what, what needs to be understood is that uh, the packet over the air is secured, is encrypted. The weakness is actually in the way you use that. So typically, if all the keys of your device are stored in a server and this server is hacked, there's nothing we can do about that, right? Unless you have, you have to respect good practices. Where do you store your key? How do you manage them? All of this. So um, saying something is secured or unsecured is, is totally, uh, you, you know, can't say it's very easy to say, but actually the, the truth is it's, it's a full chain that you need to secure, and that will require, you know, industry consortium, good practices, a lot of culture. A, a community culture must be developed around security to, to avoid the, the, the easy attacks, basically. Well, this is one of the things is that um, at last uh, couple of months ago, I was at a Things conference, and they said, okay, uh, so far a lot of devices were not designed with, uh, with security in design uh, in, in mind. In yeah. mind. Yeah. And, uh, and so how is that within LoRa? So within LoRa, we're trying to, uh, to simplify, to, to streamline this process so that people actually don't have to think about it anymore. Um, so inside the ecosystem at the moment, we're trying to do what we call pre-provisioned devices. So that basically the idea would be that when you buy a LoRa chip or a LoRa module or a system on chip, um, the, keys, the, the keys that are required to bootstrap the security process would already be in there, pre-provisioned securely, and you actually never have to see them. Actually, you can never extract them from the device, even if you hack the device. They're securely stored in a vault inside this device, and nobody can get them out. So if we manage this to if we manage to push this, this practice into the, into the ecosystem, I think that will go a very long way in solving this security breach problem because device manufacturers, users, will never have to care about keys anymore. They will never actually see them uh, anymore. All right. So we are eight years uh, uh, ahead now, uh, moving towards the 10 years. Uh, and there's yeah. probably a new conference next year uh, here as well. So, so oh. what should be, where should we be next year and what should be the topic of the conference? Oh, next year. Um, Next year, I would like to have a satellite live. <laughs> this is, as I mentioned, a pet project that I'm running with uh, guys that are here in the community. Uh, but, but this is like really a hobby. Uh, it's not a, a you know, big commercial application. Um, I think next year, I'd like to see um, 100,000 devices connected to, to live networks. Uh, you know, KPN as a network here in the Netherlands, Orange in France, Comcast deploying them in, in the US. Uh, so uh, I'd like to see... Uh, uh, useful devices connected to, to those networks. And uh, if everything goes well, actually, there'll be a lot more than this. Uh, we're seeing, you know, really a lot, a lot of complete transitioning from, from proof of concept to, to real products. So what I, next year will be about return on experience, you know, in the, in the field of real devices, I think. It'll, it'll be about, you know, what have we learned with those devices this year? Perfect. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. There's uh, many other interviews that we made during the Things conference. 
uh, 2018. So watch them all.